Jaguar, Chapter 20, Page 204. Flana came in just after sunrise. I debated telling her about Silver, but had decided against it. It wouldn't do any good to know about what he is up to. Right now, the important thing to do was find him and convince him to take Doc out of here. No change, I said. Why don't you go rest? Okay, I said, but I had no intention of resting. I walked out of the tent. During the night, I'd gotten the frequency of the collar Silver had taken out of Doc's logbook. My plan was to take the morpho up, mark the signal on the GPS, then go in on foot. The trick would be talking Silver into coming back with me. I suspected he had been looking for the lost mines of Mirabeka for years. This would explain a lot of different things. The books in his library his eagerness to take us upriver for next to nothing, and his insistence on getting through, I'm sorry, and his insistence on going through the tunnel. The most important question was one I didn't like to think about. Did Silver blow up the boat in Mania so he could take us upriver? Was he responsible for Bill Brewster's death? If so, what would stop him from killing me when he found out I knew all about his scheme. I went down to the lake, uncovered the morpho, and took off. I picked up the signal from the missing collar almost immediately. The Indian was west of the lake near the mound, which I figured must have something to do with the lost mines. I flew over top of the signal and marked it with the GPS. I flew straight back to the lake without bothering to check the collar jaguars. They could wait. My father couldn't. I pulled the morpho on shore and started to put the tarp over it. Nice anding, Lace. Sorry, nice landing, Ace. I turn around. A man was standing behind me. He was carrying an automatic rifle and had a scar on his face. Although the scar was hard to see in the midst of all the insect bikes, I hope he had enjoyed his trip up the tunnel. My shotgun was about 10 feet away from me. Don't. He picked up the shotgun and threw it into the lake. So much for that idea. What do you want, I asked. He didn't answer. I heard someone coming down the path leading to camp. It was Fred Stotes from the mining town. What's going on in camp, the man asked him without taking his eyes off me. I didn't see anybody, Tyler, Fred said. What do you mean you didn't see anybody? I'm telling the truth, Fred insisted. What are you doing up here, Fred, I asked. He smiled a toothless grin. I told you that you should have taken me up river with you. But how? Shut up, Tyler said, and knocked me down with the butt of his rifle. Tie him up. Fred flipped me over, tied my hands behind my back. Tyler pointed his rifle at me. Where's Colonel Silver? Colonel? He's not here, I said. I'm about out of patience. You better tell him, Fred said to me. He left a couple of days ago, and we haven't seen him. I have no idea where he went. We'll see about that, Tyler said. So who's up in camp? I didn't see any point in lying about this. Flanna, Brenna, and my dad. They're in a tent. That's why you didn't see them. My dad's sick, and Flan is taking care of him. We'll see about that, too, Tyler said. Get on your feet. I stood up. What do you want me to do, Tyler? Fred asked. How about keeping your mouth shut for ten minutes? That would be very helpful. I had a feeling that Tyler wasn't exactly fond of Fred Stokes. We're going to walk up to your camp very quietly, Tyler said. When we get there, I want you to call them. If you pull any crap, I'll pull this trigger and that'll be all she wrote. Do you understand the plan? I nodded. I could hear my heart beating in my chest. Good. Let's go. When we got there, Tyler had me drop to my knees. He put the barrel of his gun against my head. Okay. Call them out. Flanna, I said. My mouth was so dry I could barely speak. Louder. Flanna! She came right out and froze when she saw me. What? Just come on over here, honey, and join the party. 
or I'm going to make a real mess of this boy's head. Flanna walked over to me very slowly, and Tyler motioned for her to join me on the ground. Fred tied her hands behind her back. You're the man from the hospital, she said. You know him? I asked in shock. He's one of the men who offered to take us upriver after the accident. Shut up, Tyler said louder, pointing the rifle at her. He looked at the tent. Dr. Lansa! He's sick, Flanna said. He can't even walk. Fred, go over and take a look. <clears throat> Fred went into the tent and came right back out. She's telling the truth. He looks real bad. Are there any weapons in there? Fred went back inside and came out shaking his head. The tent's clean. Tyler pointed the rifle at me. Where's the Indian? What Indian? Don't get cute. The one who helped you catch that jaguar downriver. He didn't come up here with us. I believe that's the first truthful thing you said today. Boy, an Indian with a bucket full of money would have much better sense to come up here. Fred, go search the other tents. What's this all about? Flanna asked. My advice for both of you is to just stay quiet for the time being, Tyler said. I'm very tired. Fred came back from searching the tents. Just supplies, he said. Go out to Silver's boat and see what you can find. Tyler didn't say anything else until he heard the Zodiac start up. Okay, he said. I'm going to ask again. Where's Colonel Silver? I already... Not you. Her. I don't know, Flanna said. He left a couple of days ago. We've been waiting for him to come back so we can get out of here. Why would you want to get out of here? Because Bob's sick. We need to get him to a doctor. And Silver doesn't know he's sick? He just got sick after Silver left, I said. Tyler sat about 10 feet away from us and just looked at us through tired eyes. I didn't know about Flanna, but this really frightened me. Not that I wasn't scared before, but there was something even more menacing about him just sitting there staring at us. I heard the boat start up and come across the lake. A few minutes later, Fred came back into camp. He had many boxes of gifts with him. What's this? I found it in Silver's cabin. Tyler flipped the box over on the ground and looked at the contents. The golden jaguar wasn't there. I guess Fred decided not to share that little item. Tyler picked an old compass up and read the back. He smiled. Jake, do you have any idea where Colonel Silver found this? I shook my head. I see, Tyler stood up. Pick that stuff up, Fred. As Fred bent down to pick up the gifts, something bright and shiny fell out of his shirt pocket. Uh-oh, Fred. He tried to cover it up with his hand before Tyler saw it, but it's too, it was too late. Let's see it, Fred. Fred handed the figurine. Fred looked as if he was about to throw up. Tyler looked at the jaguar closely. I wish you hadn't done that, Fred. I was going to show it to you, Fred said. He started to back away. Tyler shot him in the chest. Fred flew backwards, hitting the ground about 10 feet away. Flanna and I just stared. As you can see, Tyler said, I'm a very serious man, and I want some very serious answers. The next person to go will be your father, Jake. Then I'll kill Flanna. Then I'll kill you. Do you understand? I nodded. Good. Now tell me where Silver is. I didn't know what to do. If I didn't tell him how to find Silver, then he might just kill us all and wait for Silver to come back to camp. Of course, he might just kill us anyway. He started walking towards Doc tent, Doc's tent. Wait! He stopped and turned back around. He's looking for the lost mines of Mirabeka. He smiled. He hasn't found them yet? I don't think so. Flanna was totally shocked. What about this? He tossed the jaguar up into the air and caught it. I told him about the gifts, the tribe, the radio collar... The colonel was always a clever one. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is take a little nap. The colonel is not the kind of man you want to approach when you're tired. It took us three tries to find you right to f find the right tributary, and I didn't have a nice boat like yours. You can imagine what that was like. 
And then there was Fred. Not the best traveling companion. The only reason I let him go with me was because Silver sabotaged my boat and I needed another. Fred helped me steal one. What about us? Flan asked. For now, I'm going to tie you to separate trees. I can't have you running around while I'm trying to take a nap. And I don't want you putting your heads together making big plans. Believe me, it's for your own protection. <laughs>